Hello, everybody around the world. Welcome to another episode of the Genesis Mindset. My name is Stephen, and I'm going to get straight into it this week because it's been a very hectic week, actually, a lot of big news. And this is the perfect time, actually, to cover part two of FUD. So I really wanted to dive into this while it's really relevant and fresh in everybody's mind because we quickly forget. So welcome to the Genesis Mindset, Mindset for Investing, Trading and Life. And as always, this is personal opinion only. This is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a, I'm just a rogue, rookie, novice investor. Uh, did well of cryptocurrency in the last cycle and plan on now uh, really capitalizing on that knowledge in this particular cycle, which some are saying could be the very last cycle. And I personally uh, am in agreement that it is potentially the last easy cycle. Let me just see if I can bring this over here. And I'm not sure if that's going to show it in the recording. I hope it does. Some people have been saying I need to see a bigger image there. So hopefully this works. Okay, so one to one million, 1, thousand to one million. So this is Mastering the Psychology of FUD, part two. Really start paying attention. So let's get into it now. Here we go. I put this into the middle. There you go. Okay, so first what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to use two examples. So well, three examples rather. So I'm going to go through these three examples of FUD that have happened recently and then the anti-FUD to that. And so there is a point to this. And so first of all, the FUD is the TradFi FUD. So the TradFi for people who don't know is traditional finances. So a few months ago, there was bankruptcies in some banks in America uh, and there was a lot of fear in the air. These were crypto-friendly uh, Silicon Valley Thanks. So there was a lot of fear in the air that surrounded this and the uncertainty about this with cryptocurrency and tech in particular. So this was something that started to kickstart some fear in the market. Then you have uh, in Australia, the Commonwealth Bank. Um, so these types of moves are happening all the time where the banks basically stop your uh, stop you from sending your own money to an exchange for quote unquote protecting us. So when I called up Commonwealth Bank and asked them why this had happened, they told me it was because there was a lot of online scams. Um, but <laughs> if you just realize that traditional finance doesn't really care anything about you whatsoever, um, you know, don't be fooled by the advertisements and the we're here for you and all of that. They're, they're only there for the bottom line. And I know it's kind of cynical and I'm not saying there's like an Illuminati and a 1%, but it's just human nature. Humans are fundamentally self-centered and in the same way, uh, companies and businesses are by extension, just collectivized self-centeredness. So they're only there for themselves. And the evidence is abundant as far as I'm concerned. There's a really, really good movie called The Big Short, which was about the 2008 uh, global financial crisis. Fantastic movie. Um, so I recommend watching things like that to really open your eyes up to what actually goes on um, in the world of finance. And there's plenty of other stuff on YouTube from people who used to be big in the financial world telling you this is this is what banks do. This is how they operate. So once you really start to understand that, you can start to see through the veil of lies. Then we had the SEC. So in America, obviously, the SEC, the Securities and Exchanges Commission, they started coming after everybody. So they started coming after CoinSpot and Binance and really throwing a lot of, a lot of uncertainty in the air because especially with CoinSpot who had under the assumption that they were basically regulated, everyone was under that assumption. Then they basically came after CoinSpot Finance. We can understand they tried to pull them into the same um, category, but they're very different, different reasons for why the SEC is coming after them. So they've opened up all these other lawsuits to uh, different kinds of cryptocurrencies as well. Um, and so there's a lot of fear about this as well. There's a lot of top 10, top 20 cryptocurrencies. So they went after, I believe it was 10. So they just started throwing the hammer down. And then you had old mate Gary Gensler <laughs> calling everyone hucksters and fraudsters in what looked to be like he was reading from a script and pausing for dramatic effect. It was really quite pathetic. And it's like, do these people realize that 
the market that they're targeting for this is people of my age. We actually grew up really having a general distrust in traditional media outlets like the news and newspapers. Maybe that stuff works on people who kind of just fell for that stuff for their whole life. But a lot of people in my age bracket are really switched on to uh, just how poorly articulated these things are to really hit the market. It really seems so incredibly fake. Um, and for me, that was just one of the most fake things. Then you have the individual token fund. So I can only speak specifically about the things that I'm in, but I have seen it all over Twitter because I like to keep my mind open to all the different possibilities out there so I can see what's happening around the market. I've seen FUD happening within Zen. I've seen FUD happening within XRP. I've seen a lot of FUD happening within uh, Chainlink as well, um, founders selling tokens. There's always this kind of FUD. Recently, the tokens that I'm in is a lot of the Rich and Hard ecosystem. So you had eHex and PHEX, like people fudding their own bags. Um, really for the sake of themselves, whatever they thought would benefit them the most, then that's the camp they end up sitting on. This, again, is just human nature. We're just fundamentally self, self-centered, self self-interested. Then you had the Pulse Chain and PulseX launch and things going below sacrifice phase, uh, sacrifice prices rather. There was no 10x, no 100x off market open. Everyone's freaking out. It's going to zero. But you see this common pattern everywhere. So I'm using... Hex and the Richard Hart ecosystem is an example, but you will see that same pattern everywhere. It's all just games. It's all just games. Once you really start to pay attention and start to see it, your mind really starts to become in tune with what this is, which is why then the thing which really helps you is understanding both sides of the FUD. So there's FUD and then there's anti-FUD. So the anti-FUD is just the opposite end of the spectrum. So the FUD is designed to make you want to sell and the anti-FUD is designed to make you want to buy. But really, you have to be able to recognize both. So now let's look at the TradFi. You've got the BlackRock ETF, which, I mean, this was days. This was days after the SEC started bringing the hammer down. I mean, ah, and how quickly people forget, how quickly the market forgets that a week ago, everyone was in meltdown. And then a week later, the mind switches, oh, BlackRock ETF and all the institutional monies is coming in. How quickly we forget. So really, this is something you really have to start paying attention to, that there's two sides of the same coin. Whether you think it's positive or negative, you really have to start to pay attention to the fact that both sides are just manipulated news designed to elicit certain responses in you. Now going to the SEC. <laughs> He had all the memes going on about Gary Gensler, um, which really, it's good to sink your mind up to this as well because the anti-FUD really balances your mind out. If you're really starting to get afraid and you just see how the world responds to the hucksters, the fraudsters and the songs that were happening everywhere and every YouTuber and streamer was basically taking the piss, then you know, how can you blame them? It was hilarious. But then you have fire Gary Gensler. So you have people in Congress who are moving to try and get him fired. It's over Twitter. People are talking about it on YouTube. There's a lot of this kind of sentiment, which is balancing out the FUD. So it's like the anti-FUD. You know, we're going to fire Gary Gensler. We're going to get rid of him. And it's, you know, the crowd is going wild. But at the end of the day, the SEC has no real power. The kinds of things that they're doing at the moment are really being shown to be outside of their jurisdiction. And so this is why they're having a lot of issues in the high court at the moment. So you really need to start paying attention to the fact that the SEC actually doesn't have a whole lot of power. Then looking at the token FUD, again, self-interested people. Once you start seeing the positive, the positive points for, for example, EHEX and PHEX, you can see people's arguments are generally what's going to benefit them. And this is not, this is not a, again, it's not a criticism. This is simply just human nature. This is how we are. And so you can see that. So once you start to see that, then you can start to separate yourself from people's opinions in this way. And really having a having the right kind of time frame. I mean, once you have the right perspective and the emotional intelligence, you can really, again, separate yourself from that FUD because it's so huge. Everyone's going crazy that hasn't done 100x. Those days of doing 100x on market opens are gone. And it all depends on the kind of games that the founders are making. And really, if you look at those kinds of tokens that do have the type of performance where they come out of the gate with a 100X, they don't last. 
they don't last. But people don't see this. They don't have a wide enough understanding of the market. So they really start freaking out. But what you need to do is you need to actually start thinking like a whale. This is how you have to think. And I will tell you as well, in uh, Pulse Chain and PulseX in particular, I'll be starting to look at the targets from the perspective of whales, not from the perspective of, oh, 5X from sacri my sacrifice rate or a 10X from my sacrifice rate, there might be a dump, or 100X at my sacrifice rate, there might be a dump. I'm thinking about a dump in relation to the whale sacrifice prices, not our sacrifice prices. The whales are the ones that move the markets and then the retail follows. So really have to start thinking like a whale to separate yourself out of the FUD and anti-FUD kind of mentality. Because of course the whales are always trying to push things down. Once you understand this, then you can really start to see it. So therefore mastery, let's get, in, let's get into the mastery side of things. FUD equals anti-FUD. They cancel each other out, whether it's good or bad. It's all just noise. You really have to just start paying attention and not be attached. Just watch and learn what's being said on either side of the polar opposites. How can it go from this state to this state in the span of a week? It's, it's, it's mind boggling, but once you start watching it and learning it and paying attention and start seeing how the market responds and start detaching yourself from it, you can really, really start to develop a mastery over FUD and anti -FUD. And Once you have that mastery as well, I mean, this is, this is, this is where you're entering into elite level, elite level investment mindset. This is the Warren Buffett mindset. This is the buy, buy when everybody's fearful and sell when everybody's greedy. And you, you see it in the tokens. I mean, and you'll see it again. You'll see it again. And I'm, I'm doing this specifically now at this time when, for example, HEX is so low. All the tokens are so low. Everything's so low. Chainlink just dropped out of its range. Um, like everything's just dumping. Everything's down like 95 to 99%. It's, it's insane. But if the same patterns repeat themselves, then you should be able to look back at this video, look at the time that it was created, which is, uh, what is today? Something of June, 23rd of June, Friday, 23rd of June in Australia. If you go back, to the time when in the charts, when this video was recorded, you'll see, oh, that that it might go lower. I'm not saying it's not going to go lower, but that could well have been the lowest points. And then what happens after that? It's only just upwards, right? But when you're detached from it, then you can really see, ah, oh, you'll be able to recognize in future cycles, ah, this, this is FUD now. This is the FUDing. This is what's going on. You really have to be detached from it. That's That's the mastery. And how do you do that? developing emotional intelligence so there's the, the emotional intelligence is really ah it's such a good skill to have in in everything in life honestly it's uh, iq is out eq is in that's 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 a fact now like even in workplaces they're really looking for managerial roles with people with high emotional intelligence and i mean how many successful people are just basically flunked out of school but they knew how to deal with people oh, this book here you know how to win friends and influence people. It's all about emotional intelligence, guys. They're the most successful people. Yes, you're going to have a basic IQ, but if you have the emotional intelligence, you can really then, ah, recognize in yourself this fear. When you start listening to the voices out there, those calm, collected voices, you can even start to recognize the fear in them. We all have it. It's cause and effect. When you put water into a freezer, it turns into ice. When you put water into a kettle and you turn the kettle on, it boils and it turns into a mist. This is just cause and effect. Your mind is exactly the same. Your mind is tied to the global consciousness. When there is fear in the world, you also you'll also experience that fear because you are also in that. You are part of that collective. But if you can just separate yourself from that fear and recognize that it's so easy, you can use it as a power. You you just start doing the opposite of that. So when you have that mastery, then you can really start to buy when everybody's selling and really start to sell when everybody's in that euphoria because you must have the emotional intelligence. Otherwise, you will get caught in the euphoria and you will get caught in thinking it's going to go forever, but it never does. It never does. And the best way to do this, as I always emphasize, and I will actually show how to do this in future episodes, having a clear mind. So having, having the power of meditation. Meditation is not just about, there's so many different types of meditations. So there's breathing meditations, there's sound meditations, there's uh, mindfulness meditations, 
there's lots, there's lots. There's silence meditations. The meditation that I'm talking about is about reflecting on what you have in your mind. So you've got all this stuff in there. You've got this picture world, bringing it up in your mind and then releasing it from your mind, just continuously, that process of continuously eliminating what you have in your mind slowly starts to break you out of that self, self-made self prison, that self-made mind of lies. And then once you're out of there, you're not in that fear. That fear coming up is not like, oh, this fear is real. It's like, oh, this fear is just something that's coming up in my mind. Oh, this thought is just something that's coming up in my mind. It's just a reflection of the past. It's not, it's not the truth. And so the, having a clear mind is not just about not being able to think or just being a dum-dum. You actually have the wisdom of the universe. It's like the artificial intelligence of human consciousness. That's the true artificial intelligence to have the wisdom that's one with the universe. And so these are the things artificial intelligence is just going to end up leading into opening people's minds up about what it means to have a clear mind because having that clarity is, it's extremely precious. It serves you in so many ways. And then the mastery mindset knowing that everyone is doing it for their own self-interest. Once you know this, once you know this, you can look past, you can look past the candies and the lollies and the and the and the smiling faces on in, in the advertisements and whatever they're trying to tell you. You know that they're doing it only for themselves. This is human nature. So you can you can get past that. And so you, you also must have your own convictions. You cannot, you cannot rely on other people and you can go back to last week's episode. There should be hopefully a, uh, I'll put a card up the top there that you can click on. You are the most important person in your investing journey. You have to have your own convictions. You cannot rely on anyone else to make those decisions for you. You can look to the world for your cues. This I strongly recommend. But if you have no conviction in yourself and you're just relying on somebody else to tell you what to do, it doesn't work. On the same note, the opposite also doesn't work. You can't just stubbornly listen only to yourself and block out the world and say, no, you're all wrong. You guys are idiots. I'm the smartest person alive. The People talk about the middle way and balance. Middle way and balanced, again, is really just from within your mind world, trying to find a balance between the two polar opposites. But if you don't even have the conceptions of the polar opposites in your mind, you just naturally are the middle way. You are the balance. And having long-term thinking, oh, my gosh, like, Again, going back to something like Pulse Chain where it's just launched, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, you got to wait, just hold for two years and it's going to do a 10,000 X. I'm not going to tell you those things. I don't, you got to, you have to go with the flow of the market. You can't just turn it off for two years and just hope and pray that it's going to be all good. But you have to have long term thinking as well. Don't get so caught in the day to day, the five minute candles, the one hour candles. Really start going and broadening your horizon and go do some long term thinking rather than the short-term thinking because again all this fud once you look back at the history it happens it happened in the last cycle and the cycle before that and it's going to happen again in future cycles but if you're caught in that day-to-day news you will get wrecked you get wrecked if you don't have the emotional intelligence the only reason why you should be watching it is to learn from it to get that to build your callus the calluses in your mind to be able to recognize oh this is just a fud i know this is fun All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I hope to see you all next week for next week's episode. Bye-bye.